Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. All right. Awesome. All right, everyone, we'll get started just so we can start on time and end on time today. Um, thank you so much for joining us for Traveling with Tourette Syndrome Tips and Tricks. Uh, my name is Dao Duong, and I am the program lead for medical professionals and community education here at the Tourette Association of America. Tonight's event is being provided as part of the Tourette Health and Education Program in partnership with the CDC. So the views expressed by the speakers and the moderators here tonight do not necessarily reflect the official policies of the Department of Health and Human Services, nor does the mention of trade names, commercial practices, or organizations imply endorsement by the U.S. government. So a few ground rules before we launch into our discussion tonight, um, because this is a webinar, um, the attendees microphones will actually be muted, but please feel free to use the Q&A box for any questions that you may have, and you can utilize the chat for any reactions, emojis, and or comments that you'd like to share with the rest of the audience here. Um, we expect everyone to be respectful and engaged during this discussion. A reminder to take space, but also make space for others. So remember that everyone's experiences here are different and that we're all here to learn from each other. Okay, so again, quick reminder, please remember to put your questions into the Q&A box below. My colleague, Alexandra Walsh here, program coordinator at the TAA will be monitoring that for us later. So we can address those questions during our live Q&A, probably the last 15 to 20 minutes of tonight, okay? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our amazing community panelists you see here tonight. Um, Nicholas Sawabini. Nick is the Transportation Security Manager at the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. In this role, he manages screening checkpoints that are very central to TSA objectives that serve to protect the traveling public by preventing any deadly or dangerous objects from being transported onto an aircraft. So during his time as an officer, Nick has also served on other multiple committees, participated in supporting initiatives that helped improve TSA. And actually in 2023, he received a diversity and inclusion yearly award for TSA at the Detroit um, Metropolitan Airport. So go Nick. Secondly, we have Eric G here. Say hi, Eric. Eric was diagnosed with Tourette's actually at nine years old, and he's trained to be a rising leader with the TAA since 2023. He's currently a senior at the University of Michigan, pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Biopsychology. Outside of school, Eric enjoys spending time with friends, running, and reading. So for tonight, I will be moderating our conversation with the panelists. Um, again, like I mentioned before, my colleague Alexandra will be joining me in the Q&A box to just monitor and make sure all of our questions get answered. So thank you so much all for being here. And if you want more information on um, the detailed bios for our panelists tonight, you can actually visit the event page linked out in the chat. Okay. So before we start the official discussion, I wanted to give a chance for the audience to participate in a quick Zoom poll. I'm not sure if many of you have done this before, but it's a quick little poll, more so to help us kind of see who is here tonight, who showed up tonight, who's curious, who's here to learn, and how we can make this a productive learning opportunity for all. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll right now, and hopefully it shows up on your screen. Can I get a thumbs up from... Alex or anyone that can still see the Zoom poll here. Awesome. There's three questions. So remember to scroll down as you answer and I'm seeing the results come in. I'll share those in a bit too. So our panelists can see the, the results here. So really first question, you know, do you identify as an individual with TS or family member or caregiver? What do you like to learn more about in terms of um, better support at the airport or with the airlines? And which one of these resources would you like to hear more about? So we have a lot to talk about tonight, but this will help our panelists give a better idea of what to highlight. Thank you so much for participating in that. And I'll give a couple of minutes. The numbers coming in. 24 participants getting there. So, a couple more seconds. 
All right, last chance, last chance to jump in. All right, so I'm gonna go end the poll here and then really quickly see if I can share the results with everyone. So can everyone see the results here? Thumbs up from Alex and the team, awesome. So traveling with a TS poll, so we have a lot of individuals who identify as having TS themselves, a lot of family members, caregivers here and friends support people. So thank you for being here, um, really. we. We are doing this because this topic was in really high demand, a high need from the community. So we're glad to see you here tonight. In terms of learning more about how airlines and airports can better support individuals with TS, a lot of you voted for in-flight. So a lot of um, maybe helpful information for the in-flight experience. Um, second, let's see, TSA security checkpoints deboarding and pre-boarding so so nick and eric those are some of the kind of the the areas the topic areas that we can maybe focus on later today so the in-flight has a lot of votes here 89 percent, followed by tsa security so awesome which one of these resources would you like to hear more about so Awesome. They'd like to hear more about TSA CARES. So Nick, maybe we can elaborate more on that later. Um, we have a resource called the IFTS card as well. And we're happy to share that out into the link as well. And airline specific accommodations. So any wisdom insight that you may have, depending on specific airlines, maybe Nick, an airline that you specifically work with, perhaps um, that would be super helpful for our audience today. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the results. And that was just really helpful for us to get a sense of who's here and what we can focus on. So thank you to everyone for answering that poll. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the first question for a panelist tonight, for both panelists. So before heading to the airport, let's say if you wanted to inform airport airline employees that you have TS or are traveling with someone who has TS, like who do you go to? Feel free to unmute yourself. So can you hear me? Yes. All right, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, having me on the uh, panel today. It's an honor and I'm glad I'm able to help like answer some questions. So um, so there are a few things prior to uh, even flying out, if you want to make sure you have assistance, more of a smooth transition into the airport and through the checkpoint, everything is. Um, first off, I, I have two children with Tourette syndrome and I've flown one time with my daughter um, she does have some verbal tics, uh, that, uh, I was concerned when we were going through the checkpoint or aboard the aircraft would, would cause, uh, you know, upset people possibly. Right. So, uh, prior to, I kind of, I, I called the airline and I made sure I arranged for seating, which would be best for our situation with us. We wanted, I, I paid the extra money so we could sit in first class and like be the first uh, seat on the aircraft. That way it was just, there was no one in front of us, just passengers behind us. Um, it could be done, you know, towards the back of the plane, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, I, I arranged for the seating. I advised that my child uh, had a disability and it kind of explained it. That was the phone call. Um, I, being working for TSA, instead of calling TSA Cares, I actually, because I was flying out of my home airport, Tri-Metro Airport, uh, told one of the soups, hey, we're coming through. Can you meet me out front? Um, but that is actually the TSA CARES, where if you call and explain uh, your concern, disability, what you need help with coming through the checkpoint, you can prearrange to have a, uh, it's a passenger support specialist uh, or a supervisor just kind of bring you through the checkpoint. I could talk a little bit more about that later uh, if, 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 if we want here. Um, when the day of, when I, got to the airport, I directly spoke with the uh, ticket agent and every airline is different. I prefer to fly Delta. I've had really good experience with Delta. Um, if you do fly Delta, the gentlemen and ladies who wear red coats are the ones you want to talk to because those are the soups managers. Um, I discreetly let them know my concerns and they were just amazing. They were absolutely amazing. Um, they have a system now that they can notify people who should know of any uh, individual's disabilities where they might need a little help or the flight crew might need to be aware of. So um, when we got to the gate, we got priority boarding. Uh, the flight attendant never brought it up, but she was such a sweetheart. Uh, she kept bringing snacks, um, things like that. I can tell you the same thing 
when I got to DC, when I told them, when, uh, when even before they did the pre-boarding, because my daughter does get very stressed out, um, they allowed us to board before any passenger, just so she could kind of get settled in um, and relax. But a lot of it is, you know, how much you want to notify in the persons you should notify would be the aircraft uh, carrier, uh, TSA for the checkpoint piece. Um, those, those would be the main ones. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. I think on that note too, so what do you recommend for individuals with TS or family traveling with children to help manage that stress or anxiety, right? While navigating sure. the airport and going through TSA security, anything you can so, offer there? Absolutely. So everybody's situation is a little different. Um, if it's first time flying and depending on the age of the kids, you might actually want to take a trip to the airport in advance, depending on what kind of anxiety concerns they may have, so they can see it. Um, if your travel plans are flexible, um, our busiest travel days are Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Extremely busy. Saturday, it's slow. Um, if you're trying to catch that first flight out in the morning, it's extremely busy versus around, you know, afternoon, right? So, um, Plan accordingly uh, to decrease the stress. Again, the TSA Cares is a great product because anybody who's flown might see those lines and uh, a child with TS in those lines, it's difficult. Um, at least it is for mine. So with the TSA Cares, you can have arrangements based upon, um, for instance, we have children with autism, a lot, a lot of sensory issues where we've actually opened up a screening lane just for them. Um, of course, that's if we have the staffing to do it at the time, but we do our best to just make the experience as smooth as possible. So if that is a stressor where you're concerned, um, reach out to us in advance. If you don't, you can still request to speak to a supervisor prior to coming through and let them know, hey, I have this situation. Um, can you help me? Can we, you know, these are my limitations. This is what I need. Also, a lot of people don't realize this, and I'm going to give you a TSA secret, and, you know, all the TSA officers might be mad at me, but individuals with disabilities, um, you're allowed to go, if you need, to the front of the line. Um, individuals with disabilities do not actually have to wait in line if there's a cognitive concern or physical concern. You might have been to the airport and you see people getting pushed in the wheelchair. You'll see them going to the front of the TSA line. Because again, individuals with disabilities, they have every right if that if physic, you know, if they need to, just because you say hey, I have a disability, doesn't, you know, give you a fast card. But if that's something your disability will limit your, you know, uh, ability to wait in line or be around all this noise, that's something a family should look at. And they could prior to even speaking with us, get um assistance at the airline, ask for someone to escort them to the gate so they can get through the line quicker. So that's a little tip. Don't share that with everybody. Then everybody's going to go to the front of the line. No, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> what a gift, Nick. And uh, thank you for sharing that with our audience today. Eric, anything that you do to manage your stress or anxiety when you travel, especially through going through TSA security? Yeah, no, I was going to say I 100% agree with Nick with everything he said. Um, I just wanted to emphasize the importance of just planning accordingly and kind of just pre-planning um, sort of everything that's going to be going on the day of your travel. Um, something that uh, Nick mentioned, you know, just like, for instance, choosing what suit you want to sit in. I know some airlines allow you to, you know, select um, a specific seat. And I think maybe trying to look for those might be helpful, um, especially if you know you're someone who might prefer to sit in the front or sit in the back of a plane. Um, I know there's also something called a TSA pre-check, which Nick, you might be able to talk more about. That's kind of sure. um, basically just kind of expedites your process through the TSA security line. Um, but also, like you said before, um, you you can't, you are allowed to say, you know, that if you have a disability that you can be put in the front of the line. Um, I think in terms of stuff that I did, and we can talk more about it when we talk about just the general in-flight experience. I think you, out of everyone else, know your threats more than anyone else. Um, and sort of what's worked for you, kind of just following that along the same lines. I know for me, um, I always like to bring my headphones um, and I listen to music, um, which helps a lot when I'm on the airplane. Um, 
I also chew gum, which helps with my, you know, ticks. And that also is something that you can consider just anything that works for you, you know, bring like a fidget toy, for instance, or bring a book. Um, and I think just kind of just planning out the day. Um, and like Nick said, you know, finding a day that you might be actually nice to just go to the airport and just kind of figure out where everything is. So it's not, you know, a big surprise when you get there the day of. Um, and I think in terms of just communicating with security, uh, I will say, um, I know we also talked about just like the I have Tourette's card. Um, and for those who don't know what that is, it just basically talks, tells you what Tourette's is and just says, here's sort of my condition. And then it kind of just tells them, you know, what I'm doing is um, involuntary. And it, I think it's it's really helpful if you might feel like you're not able to actually tell someone. Um, so yeah, definitely. Those are some resources I would highly recommend for sure. Awesome. Yeah, you highlighted really great resources, Eric. And Alexandra, if she hasn't already, we'll put out the link to that I have TS card because sometimes maybe having folks read instead of having you yourself to explain might help, right? So that's what the, the card is there. So Thank you so much for your responses to that. So let's switch over to, let's talk about pre-boarding specifically. So I know we talked about going through TSA security, getting the front of the line, all of that, but is there anything that our community members can do to help ensure like a smooth boarding experience specifically with individuals with TS? So like we talked about getting getting through security, but what about getting to the gate, extra time to board? Do you board first? Do you board last? Sure. Like any tips and tricks on that? Eric, I'll, I'll kind of take this one. Um... So getting to the gate smoothly, especially if you're unfamiliar with the airport, uh, again, allow yourself extra time when you get to the airport. Uh, you can ask for assistance to, to the gate uh, at our terminal um, or at Detroit Metro. We have individuals who will push in wheelchairs. Uh, they will walk you to the gate. They'll ensure, um, you know, you make it to where you need to be. Uh, if you want to let the uh, gate agent know when you arrive that, um, hey, I have TS. I'm really going to need extra time to kind of settle in. Is there anything you can do to help me? Um, as I stated in Washington with my daughter, we were able to board before anybody just so she could get seated, relaxed. Um, you know, there would be no concern. So, you know, getting there with the, you could get the assistance of, of the airline. And, and again, the pre-boarding aspect, just communicating your needs to the air carrier. Eric, yeah, no, to add to I that? also I agree with that. I think just also maybe trying to go to the gate just earlier than you need to and kind of just telling the the people at your gate just sort of, you know, I have Tourette's and if they could just let maybe not let the like airplane staff know beforehand. Um, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure how that works, but I think like they should be able to. And it just makes it easier so they can let, you know, the flight attendants, the pilots, everyone knows um, on the plane before you actually get on to it for sure yeah oh my god awesome that's great advice um so now we're gonna actually talk about like the in-flight experience and i think a lot of folks here tonight want to hear more about like this particular part of traveling right so um you know what would you both recommend what are some tips and tricks to help manage like the stress and anxiety during in-flight experience right i know a lot of folks maybe are concerned about having ticks on the plane you know like what are some of those um tried and true methods that you have implemented in your own, within your own circles or families? And what can you share with the audience about that? Eric, do you want to lead with yeah. this one? Yeah. Yeah. No, I can talk about that. Um, I, I kind of mentioned before some things that I do to help is, you know, listening to music. I have noise canceling headphones and I think they also help a lot just kind of tuning out the noise. Um, something else that helps for me is, you know, just bring a book that you can read on the plane. Sometimes, you know, the flight just goes by really fast that way. Uh, I think in terms of, I think the biggest fear is just the people around you. Um, and I know for sure, like for me, that's also something that I think about just if the person I'm sitting next to, if I should let them know about my TS or not. Um, for that, I will say, uh, I don't think you need to 100% all the time tell them you have TS if you don't want to. You know, if it's like a two hour flight, and you don't think it's something that's going to be bothering them, you don't need to let them know. It's just whatever makes you most comfortable. But with that said, I will say, I think I think telling someone that just like letting them know yeah, you have 2S, it's not as, you know, it's not as stressful as it sounds like it is. Um, a lot of times in my experience, when I tell, 
you know, the people I'm saying next to that I have Tourette's, they often might already know what it is. And they'll say something like, oh, I have a cousin who has TS. And it actually makes a great, you know, conversation starter. Um, or if they don't know, I kind of think of it just as an opportunity to, you know, educate someone about it so that later on, you know, when they meet, actually meet someone else with TS, that they kind of already know what it is. And I, I think just kind of framing it in that way as something that, you know, you're helping others kind of letting them know about it as opposed to like, oh, you know, I had to tell them about my TS, they're going to be bothered by it. I don't, I think a lot of people are happy to learn about it. And I, I think it's um, kind of just framing it that way also helps kind of ease things. And it helps me at least just telling the person next to me because it helps my tics also um, not be as bad. Yeah, no, sure. I, that's really, that's really great, Eric. And um, you, you mentioned reframing, right? Reframing that as like an educational opportunity and kind of helping putting that pressure on yourself to, let's say you don't want to disclose, you don't have to. Um, Nick, just curious as your role as a parent, you know, as a child with TS, mm-hmm. what is that like for you in flight experience? Like, do you, do you normally disclose or communicate that ahead of time yeah. for people in your role? Like, what do you typically do for your family? So, what me personally i I always ask my daughter's permission or my son's permission before i let anybody know anything right because um or she'll say yeah could you please tell um like even in a restaurant could you please let the server know Uh, it's entirely up to her but uh when we flew i informed uh the passengers who are uh, around us just so they were aware uh in case they heard her use uh colorful language uh, that that was unavoidable and that was her, right? Uh, as far as her being comfortable during it, the headphone thing, um, my daughter has those 3M construction grade headphones, which has the music. She can listen to her music. Um, thank goodness for iPads. They're great. Uh, load all the movies and everything you want. Uh, all the crafts um, just, just to keep busy uh, is a big one. Again, if you choose the the flight crew, it's a really good idea. They know. Um, I know uh, people who are older with TS maybe are concerned about saying the wrong thing in an airport and getting in trouble um, by letting us know or flight crew kind of know in advance or or having the card with you. Right is really good um, because sometimes we do have law enforcement aboard the aircrafts and the flight crew do interact with the law enforcement. So if there was ever a concern. Um, they could help. It, it's good that they know. So that, to me, th- th- those are some of the things that would help uh, the in-flight experience most certainly. That's really great. No, really great um, comments there. Um, you know, in t- overall experience, like, are there mechanisms to, I guess, submit, I don't want to call them complaints, but, you know, there's always comments, right, to how to do things a lot sure. better or feedback to airlines. Like, is there a way for persons to go about doing that um, in regards to, you know, their in-flight experience, which typically is, you know, traveling with someone with TS or themselves? So each air carrier is very different in how they approach it. Uh, I'm going to be honest. You'll have uh, air carriers, you call the number, you'll be speaking to someone, a human being very quickly and others where it uh, goes to a voicemail you know, and it tells you the box is full. So um, every website will have some way to give comments um, and concerns. I know Delta, not with the TS aspect, but I've had concerns in the past and uh, I had a great, they, they gave a good solution to it. Um, like it, For the in-flight, I could tell you too, if I can mention TSA as well, um, if, if you had any concern or you needed to make a complaint, if you went to our website, tsa.gov, um, you could do it there. And every one of them is taken seriously, especially when it's civil rights and liberties. I, I personally investigate, uh, along with my colleagues, anything out of Detroit Metro, um, and, and they're taken very, very seriously. Um, air carriers, again, though, each one is a little different. Um, you could even go so far as speaking when you arrive at your destination airport to a manager there, that might help if you actually have a person in front of you to talk to. Um, that's another outlet. That's really great. And it's nice to hear that someone's taking the inquiry seriously. You know, oftentimes we, we all want our stories to be heard and our experiences mm-hmm. addressed. So um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, a quick, I think this is an interesting question too about, you know, individuals that have sensory concerns, doesn't like loud noises, right? Being touched, like 
how would someone, any tips and tricks on how to manage that? Maybe not specifically, not even just within the TSA security checkpoint itself, but like in the plane, you know, sometimes seats are very close to each other, you know, like any tips and tricks on managing that? Eric, yeah. you take it. Yeah, I can take that. Um, I guess I think, well, first off, I would highly recommend getting a pair of noise canceling headphones, especially if you know that you're someone who might have certain sensory concerns with just noise in general. They work really well. Um, if you don't have them, you know, maybe just getting a pair of earbuds and just listening to music, um, that also really helps. Um, and kind of like I talked about before, is just, you know, your threats more than anyone else. So just what works for you, um, kind of just sticking to that when you're on the plane. Um, and in terms of like, I think it's also just important to talk to TS, TSA staff um, just about like, if there, if there are certain procedures, I know, like, for instance, um, when I was on the, when I was getting on the plane once, um, when I was going through a line, they had to pat me down. Right. And generally they do a really good job. They explain to you everything that's going to happen and you kind of, so you kind of know what to expect, but just letting them know, you know, Hey, I have Tourette's. Um, so just to let them know that like, you know, might have involuntary movements, for instance, will also really help. So just kind of letting people know around you, um, I don't really have much, I guess, in terms of just in on the plane itself, um, sort of, um, I guess, you know, finding seats that you think you would be more comfortable in. If you want to sit, you know, near the aisle or near the window, um, that could also definitely help with that. So. Great. Yeah, I can, um, I guess, um, speak on the topic, uh, really myself, um, because she doesn't, fortunately, my, well, my daughter does have some sensory issues, but not enough where um, I could really give a tip or trick on that yeah. in flight. Okay. Oh, thank you. No, thank you so much for that. And um, I hope that was helpful for the audience. This actually wraps up sort of our like structured question segment of tonight's um, webinar. And actually, we're going to go ahead and start our audience live mm -hmm. Q&A. And I know there's about a couple of questions already in the Q&A box. So I'm going to invite my colleague Alexandra back uh, to go ahead and read some of those um, questions for our panelists. And then we'll we'll try and get to all of them if we can. So we have enough time. Right, Hello, everybody. Um, Thank you for joining us tonight. We do have some questions and I'm gonna start with the first one, which is, I'd love to know about what to do if you have a tick attack on the plane. That yeah, I know that. I mean, that, that can be a really scary situation, especially if it's your first time flying, you know, just not sure what to expect and something like that happens. I think just kind of being prepared in advance, you know, letting the people know around you, letting the flight staff know, I think that would kind of help best, you know, in case it does happen, help have people kind of just prepare for that. Um, you know, if there's something that you, you know, that helps with your ticks in general, that you might avoid a tick attack, like, you know, having a fidget toy to play with, or, you know, reading a book, um, just anything that works for you also helps. But I will say, you know, if you do have a tick attack, um, it's not nothing to be embarrassed about, you know, you can't control that, right? Um, just letting people know around you so they understand. Um, I think that's that's kind of just my advice in general. So yeah, with the, again, the I, I keep going back to letting uh, people know or flight crew know uh, if, if you're comfortable, uh, the travelers around you. I mean, it's one of those things, you have a legal right to be who you are. Um, individual disabilities have every right. It, it's one thing um, if you're having a tick where you're hitting someone, which, you know, is possible, but versus making uh, maybe just, I don't want to say annoying, but annoying your uh, fellow traveler, if they feel some sort of upset about it, um, they can feel upset all they want. At the end of the day, you can only be you and you can only, you know, do what you can do to, to, to prepare right um but I, I would say you know it, it it's difficult but it, you can't do anything about it and you know don't be embarrassed this is just who you are thank you for your responses the next question is is the tsa care advisory employee to help through checkpoint available at every airport in the u.s 
Yes, um, the TSA CARES program is every airport in the United States. We created a, a passenger certified specialist prior to TSA CARES in response to uh, Congress. Uh, a lot of individuals with disabilities were concerned about TSA uh, when we first came in um, and their you know, civil liberties and uh, dignity getting through. So the uh, passenger certified specialist was initially created. These are the individuals when you call TSA CARES who will help you when you come through. Um, you would call, what happens is a calendar invitation sent to a manager at whatever airport you're flying out of. Um, and they would assign it to a passenger support specialist or they may actually have uh, a full-time pass passenger support specialist um, at the airport. Um, every airport's different. My airport on my shift will put 15, 16,000 people through the checkpoints. Um, another airport might have about 200 passengers a day. Uh, everybody's setup is a little different. Um, a small airport, you may not need our help because uh, it's so small. Um, but an airport my, my size, a CADEX airport, you may very well. But it, the, it is available um, nationwide. And the way to do it is through our website. Thank you for that. Our next question is, my daughter has not been diagnosed with TS yet since it has been four months, not a year. Her diagnosis is provisional tick disorder. Would I still be able to use TSA CARES? Absolutely. Um, TSA CARES is there for you. Uh, for any uh, you know medical limitation or concern, we have veterans who are, they have post-traumatic uh, stress. Um, so all the noises and everything can be very difficult coming through. We take care of them. Um, you don't have to prove any cognitive physical disability. We'll take your word on it. Okay. Um, just all you would have to say is my daughter, my son has difficulty with this, or I'm afraid they might, you know, say uh, something wrong. And I just need you guys to be aware of it. I need help getting through. That's fine. Even the officers too, you, you don't have to tell your medical condition unless you actually want to. You know, we'll take your word on it. Thank you so much. The next question we have is, do you recommend the sunflower lanyard? I know that they are mostly used in Europe. Do, does America, TX, or American, excuse me, TSA agents understand them? So yes, no. The program is newer in the States. Um, my airport, we were trained on it. Uh, we have quite a few new officers who have not received the training yet. Um, it is catching on across the US. Uh, that's a great question because a lot of people don't want to say, hey, I have a disability. Uh, they don't, they just want people to know, hey, I have something, a hidden disability, just be aware, right? So the program is taking off, um, but it's, I can't say every airport has a strong knowledge of it. Uh, so at this point, you you may have to say, hey, I have a disability, this is my limitation. Amazing, thank you. Our next question we have is, do you have any experience with American Airlines? We are traveling on Friday and concerned on how to handle it. I can't really speak as to, I've, I've, never, I've never flown with them with my, with my child, but again, it's the same where you know, through the checkpoint, you have us and all air care, all air carriers by law have to accommodate individuals with disabilities, whether it be helping you get to the gate, uh, extra time boarding, things like that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I personally have not had any experience with American Airlines, although I can imagine they're all pretty similar. And like Nick said, you know, the TSA is going to be there and for in all the airports. So that's also something that you can kind of uh, work with them on. Thank you for your responses. The next question is, in order to have someone escort you through TSA, uh, TSA process, if you do not have a travel companion, is it best to call the TSA care number? If you, uh, so if you believe you may have difficulty going through the checkpoint by yourself, I would call TSA cares. You may not necessarily need someone from the airline to escort you through. You just might need help while you're at the checkpoint. Once you're through, you're good to go, right? 
Um, I would call TSA CARES. Um, again, if you see a TSA officer uh, at the checkpoint, you might mention, hi, I'm an individual with disability. I need help getting to the checkpoint. Who can, who can I talk to? Or am I able to talk to a supervisor? And, and we'll get you somebody to kind of talk to and understand what you need. The next question we have is, uh, two of my friends with severe Tourette's and coprolalia have been escorted off of planes before. Is this legal? And is there anything you can do to get back on the plane if you are escorted off? So from a legal question, I can't, I can't answer as a lawyer, but I can tell you from a dad side, individuals with disabilities are protected under the law, right? My daughter has that as well. Um, that's why I was greatly concerned when we flew for the first time. Um, a lot of it, again, is people knowing. Um, it, it's one thing uh, if you are in someone's face yelling. It's another thing if this is an unavoidable tick. I, I would say if you were escorted off the aircraft because of it, um, and they're not willing to listen to your concerns uh, as an individual with disabilities, there, there are roads to complaining. Um, and there probably is some legal recourse to that. Thank you for your response. Our next question is, Is do you have to disclose if you have a disability? Absolutely not, absolutely not. Um, I mean, it, it's only if you want to. Uh, at the end of the day, um, sometimes uh, individuals with disabilities feel that everybody will know or they can see it or not when it's not as noticeable as you think, um, especially, again, we, I have a checkpoint, we have a, thou, a thousand people in one hour come through. So um, a lot of times we would just never know at all. Um, if, you're, if you're concerned, you know, to the point where you might, you know, you're afraid you'll get in trouble for saying something or uh, being um, aggressive or, um, combative with the security, you might you might want to say something. And the, and the TSA, uh, the TS card is great to have. It really is because sometimes you get stressed, you can't explain. It's just best that you could give them the card and just can you please read this. Yeah, to totally agree with what Nick just said. So nothing to add to that. Okay, thank you guys. Next question is, is there something specific to tell or ask TSA CARES to be considered for approval to go through a checkpoint differently, or can you just tell them your diagnosis? Just tell them your limitation. They're going to ask, there's a series of questions they're going to ask is one, you could say, hey, I have this, or you don't even have to get specific. You just say, I have a tick disorder of some kind, right? Um, they're going to ask, what is it that you need? Um, we have people who call who actually don't need our assistance, who say, hey, I'm a diabetic, I have um, syringes. They're afraid they can't bring them through, but they want TSA to know. They're allowed. They, they didn't actually need to call, but it made them feel better in doing that. So you would, you would tell them what your needs are and, and how we could help you. Um, a lot of times, again, you, you, don't, you will not even necessarily need us to help you through. Um, but a lot of questions I see, um, if I may just say one more thing is like, um, medicines. People are a lot of time are very worried about getting their medicine, especially liquid medicine through. Um, hey, if it's medicine, you're going to be able to get it through. Just let them know this is medicine. I need this. It's prescribed and we'll, regardless of the size, we'll do additional screening. You'll be able to get that through. Chime in real quick, sorry, Alex, about, I think you brought up a really good point, um, Nick and Eric, about a lot of this sounds like self-advocacy, right? We talked about, you know, sometimes often things are out of your control in terms of, you know, when do I say this? When do I not? You know, who do I contact? Who do I, you know, it's so many factors that are external and out of your control. Right. But what I'm hearing a lot is that the mm -hmm. self-advocacy piece of, I'm going to communicate. I'm yep. going to be transparent about what I need to make sure I get through security safely and comfortably mm -hmm. and sit in the plane and be comfortable and safe, right? So um, that's what I'm hearing. And I hope that's kind of one of the major takeaways from tonight's conversation from the audience is that like self-advocate, like you're your best support person. And I'm not saying that your family members or parents aren't yourself, but you yourself having that capability and confidence to do that 
makes a lot of difference, right? So I know I'm looking at Eric, you know, yeah. nodding his head. Uh, he's agreeing with that. So just wanted to highlight that quick kind of observation. Thanks, Alex. Uh, the last question that we have actually is asking about what maybe you would share from your experiences or suggest in future if a, a mask mandate ever was to return. I like I, I'm sorry I'm not not really understanding. Say it again, ma'am. I, I I'm. That's okay. The individual is asking about you know what maybe feedback or experiences you had or suggestions if a mask mandate was to ever return again, like it occurred during COVID while traveling. <laughs> that that was you know that uh, I can tell you I know that can be quite difficult with a tick disorder uh, potentially because of just having it on your face or you may have a tick where you touch your face. Um, the mask mandate, um, I hope it doesn't come back um, because like many a person, I had to wear it all the time at work and you're on the aircraft and you're wearing it. Um, I, I, I don't wanna say I don't see it coming back, but at this point I, I don't for quite a while unless we have another pandemic simply because CDC is lifting like even quarantine guidance like they had before. So um, I hope my words are right in what I'm saying. But yeah, I, um, if it comes back, it comes back, but I, I don't see it anytime soon, hopefully not. Question, yeah. We had another question come in, so I apologize, I spoke too soon. Not at all, not at all. Um, the next question is, what if you are traveling abroad in another country? That's a good question. That's good. Eric, have you ever traveled abroad? I have I have when I was really young, but I was probably too young to actually remember my experience. Um I don't know if you kind of Nick, you know about just like the logistics with in terms of like legal stuff with you know being in another country, whether or not those same yeah. laws apply. So it's it's tough when we're talking other countries. If we're talking European Union, we have European Union. I would imagine the laws and um, the programs are really similar. I know in England there's an uh, uh, organization similar to TAA uh, who actually, if you look on the Internet, has a uh, tips and tricks when on public transportation uh, manual out there somewhere. Um, I would imagine customs, U United States customs most likely has a program like TSA, where we could let our uh, US customs know prior to us returning uh, to the States. As far as other countries though, I, I, I couldn't tell you, I just, I just couldn't. But like I said, if they're part of the European Union, um, they're probably very similar. England mirrors almost everything we do security wise. Thank you for that. Well, that is it for the questions in the Q&A, Dow. Well, keep them coming, folks. We oh. still have some time. Um, I, I think I see them. I, I spoke too soon again. Yes, <laughs> <go ahead. laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy to take over, Alex. So give you get a bit of a reprieve here. So um, a question about, I'll be likely traveling to the Middle East this summer or next. How are the TSA care type programs there? Um, is there anything I should know? Again, kind of related to international travel with this one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, with the international travel, I can't speak as to their programs. I could tell you, you know, in the good US of A, uh, we have quite a different, quite a few different things. We do focus on individuals with disabilities. Other countries may not. They may not have the same thing. I do know with air carriers, though. Uh, their U.S. air carrier, most likely, even in another country, I would assume they would have, I would hope, some sort of assistance similar to the states getting to the gate um, because it's a U.S. air carrier flying back and forth. Um, same thing, I would I would let the flight crew know and everything. Uh, the TSA CARES aspect, uh, I'm not sure if they have a program, anything similar to what we have. Yeah, I know the, sun, the mm -hmm. Sunflower Lanyard, though, that's not from the states. So there might be other countries uh, participating in that um, globally that were that were not uh, participating as heavy as them. Mm -hmm. I would, I mean, Nick, would you recommend that? I guess in any situation, just to call ahead and be prepared as most as you can. So right? Contact you said 
airline first. You said the big thing. You're your biggest advocate, guys. You have to be vocal. Um, you don't have to necessarily share everything about yourself. But if you're concerned in anything, you do have to make the phone calls. You do have to do the prep work. You don't want to do it one day before you're flying out. Um, the internet is is great. Um, every air carrier has a website. In every air carrier, there'll be a section on individuals' disabilities, right? And not every air carrier is an international air carrier, but Delta most certainly is, or Lufthansa, um, Air France. They all will have uh, operators you can call. And you could ask, hey, is this something, uh, you know, in the States, I understand there's a TSA CARES. Do you know, do they have something similar wherever I'm going? Um, what do you, what will you guys do when I'm in France trying to fly home? Should I tell flight attendants? Can you put it in the computer for me? Because like I said, Delta, they could actually put it in the computer and only those who have a need to know can see it. Just to, It really just depends, but it's you, you have to be vocal ask questions, do research. There's no way around it. Yeah, no, that's really good. I think that's kind of again the takeaway from tonight's conversation. Um, another question, again, kind of similar along those lines of like, is there any way to notify immigration or customs ahead of time? I mean, it, it can be a very stressful part, right? If international travel, right. is there a way, I mean, similar to what you're saying, being vocal and kind of calling ahead of time, is that, can that be applied to customs? I would say every agency, uh, most likely has a program like ours uh, at TSA. Um, something Eric mentioned earlier, and I'll kind of bring up real quick. We have a program, TSA PreCheck. Uh, it is a program people pay for. Um, I think it's once every five years you have to apply, you have to get fingerprinted. But the benefit is it takes only a few minutes to get through the line. You get to keep your shoes on, uh, most of your stuff in your bag. Uh, the benefit to that is like if, if you get stressed out waiting in the line or coming through, taking your shoes off. Um, international aspect, there's something called global entry, similar. When you come in the country, instead of waiting in this extremely long line, there's a shorter area, uh, you know, hey, I'm a US citizen, great, come on in kind of thing. So um, every government, United States, it has to have something to accommodate individuals with disabilities, what they call it or what it, specifically is i i don't know um but there there are definitely programs out there yeah no that's that's really helpful and i hope that helped with whoever submitted that particular question so this is interesting um and again for those that are interested in getting access to the i have ts card um alex do you mind can you relink it out in the chat i know sometimes people don't always see it or it's like on the top um but this is interesting because i know the taa is always interested in expanding on the topic of transportation and someone actually in the, the Q&A talked about well let's say the flight was good right um, what do you do when you get to rental cars right rental vehicles like any um, tips or tricks that you can share there I know as Nick as a, a traveling parent Eric yourself you know I'm pretty sure like what is it like what's the next step like right not only have you you know kind of gone through the airport got through the in-flight experience but like what's typically after right how do you uh, prepare yourself for those next steps and this could be a larger conversation um, you know yeah. we can definitely do like a part two for mm -hmm. different kinds of modes of transportation I know I understand there's a lot of questions about like um, driving a car for example the train but this is just one question that came up today and I think it's a good segue before we kind of start closing out tonight's conversation. Eric you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, I don't really have I guess personal experience with going to like a rental car company and kind of renting out a car. Um, I guess I would say it might be worth just letting the people know there ahead of time. Um, I guess, I don't know. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. One, like one thing I, I could chime in. Um, so with travel, there are the uh, road warrior travelers who they don't want to wait for anything that's why they have pre-check that's why they're first class this and that a lot of times with um car agencies you can pay for arrange everything in advance and it's pretty much you're just grabbing the keys and, and you're going um rather than staying at the counter for extended uh, period of time so again that kind of goes back to 
making sure you're taking the time to do the research and uh, take care of everything you can so you don't have to take care of, care of it the day of. Yeah, the preparation is key, right? Starting a couple of days earlier, right? Looking into mm -hmm. those things, to ensure the smooth transition to all of those points of transportation. So, all right. So I don't see any other questions coming into the Q&A. I think I think we answered every one of them. And so we're going to go ahead and just maybe start wrapping up tonight's session. I have 10 minutes left. And I want to also... Um, Thanks, Alex. You linked out to information on the Sunflower Lanyard program there. So take a look. Um, but also, I just wanted to make sure we have time for a quick evaluation. And of course, you know, I know people hear surveys are like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But um, I'm sure you want to, because this is how we learn about whether or not you like tonight's programming, right? If you want to hear more from Eric or Nick, and even more individuals in the TAS community talk about different other kinds of transportation services, um, cars, like I mentioned, train, any anything, anything really, we listen to you. We listen to you, we hear you, and we try to be very mindful of it when we do our programming. So um, Alex has linked out a survey monkey in the chat. So if you don't mind taking a quick five minutes right now, just to go ahead and click open that survey and answer some quick questions, um, that would help us out a lot, okay?